is made up of water. And then um, others think of the, the universe is made of spirit and all this. But because while both of you were reading, I was taken up with this. And I think I was just asking myself, like, I need more explanation on this, or I, I need it really more simplified. And then after that, I will also have my questions, which are always, I mean, which are running in my mind as it has been read. So as of now, I really, I need like, um, just put in, in, in simple terms and um, summarize kind of, then uh, I will be able to formulate those questions which are already running in my mind currently. Thank you. Thank you for that. Senior Glenro is here. Uh, senior uh, comrade, what are you trying to get out of this? What's probably the information you are trying to think that Nkrumah wanted to pass to us through this text? You know, uh, uh, as somebody has said, the um, idea of trying to ensure the rationalization of uh, philosophy is, is, is brought across, but I'm still reading and absorbing it, to be quite honest, you know. Um, it's, it's, I thought I had it in the first paragraph, uh, and then you said that it would, might be better explained in the second paragraph. Uh, I don't think that worked for me. <laughs> I think that I was trying to grasp the first paragraph, and then between idealism and materialism, uh, and then sort of step back uh, in waiting to read the second paragraph. I don't know if it's been enlarged for anybody else, um, but um, if you are, uh, if you have a setup like mine, there is a white area. Uh, there you go. So it has been enlarged. Uh, I enlarge it myself. You go to the view option and you can enlarge it by a number of uh, percentage. But as I said, I was grasping the first paragraph and I'm not sure I was enlightened anymore with the second paragraph. Thank you. Thank you for that. Maybe sorry for putting more, putting adding more confusion to what already the first paragraph did to us. But let me get what Sister Ida is thinking. You can only share your understanding in one paragraph, not unless you connect all of them. I only thought that when the first paragraph brought issues again of uh, uh, rationalism and empiricism at the end, I thought it was wise for us to read what it takes in the second paragraph. But that's not, of course, our nature and our behavior of our class. We always read one paragraph and discuss it. So, Sister Ida, who read this? Are you able to connect some dots? Mm. I have to say, not really. Um, the words are so big and... Um, I, I was I'm not quite sure that I can mix them all up together so easily. Um, in that, to me, rational is something that is, and you can understand it. Um, ideal idealism and materialism. Uh, I presume idealism idealism would be what you would really, in ideal circumstances, think of, and materialism again comes back to um, uh, materials and uh, um, little, I, I think of it as inanimate. inanimate. So um, I don't know. I, I think I'm really totally quite, quite, quite confused in my own way. Um, Im imperialism, imperialism, um, I don't, I don't even know what I think that means. I, I don't know whether I think that means um, is another word for um, what what's the word people use for um, imperialism? Imperialism, like um, like maybe Westernism. Westernism doesn't sound right, but um, imperialist. We, yeah, you talk about the imperialists, so I, I don't know that that is necessary imperialism but to me that's the nearest i can think in my head so i'm very sorry i've probably confused everybody more than have uh, enlightened anybody 
it's just I, it's just trying to find words that mean something in my mind. So I, I don't know. Oh, you made it very small now. I'll try to make them bigger bit. That's no, all right. I've, I've I've moved it myself. So, mm. so I I um um I'm really and then David Hume. It sounds like he must be the one. I'm not sure whether he was materialism. Was he materialism? It says it's imperialism, but imperialist, imper imperialist. Ah, so I don't know. The words are too big for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I really, really needed Sister uh, Brother Bobby to be here, just that he is not able to join, but I think he'll be joining soon. Uh -huh. I really had to, I, I really had to first of all also go to Google and search some meaning of some words, and I think I, it's very important first of all to read the meaning of those words as per Google, so that you can understand the difference between materialist and mm -hmm. idealist. Now Google says that the word materialistic is excessively concerned with material possession either money oriented then philosophically he says it is relating to or denoting the theory or belief that nothing exists except matter and its movement and modification it is a materialist belief system that reduces everything to nature and natural processes and remember the matter aspect uh, as i was saying when you are discussing the first concept of this question, what there is, and the tales, philosophers say that the universe originated from water, he took the materialist position, which means everything exists or everything starts from matter. And nothing actually in this cont in this universe has anything apart from matter. And you see, when we are talking of the kinetic, whatever forces of how matters evolve and change. So he, these materialists believe that nothing exists except matter and its movement and modification that try to reduce everything to natural process. Everything we go through or how the universe made or how the universe came to be is a natural process. It came out through a natural process. While idealist, of course, if I try to Google the word idealist, idealist, idealist. Uh, idealistic. So, idealist is characterized by ideas and realistically aiming for perfection. So, idealism, if you check what it says, uh, idealism is uh, the representation of things in ideal or idealized form. Any of various system or thought in which the objects of knowledge are being held to be in some way dependent on activities of the mind. So idea, idealists believe that of course as we were trying to link it before our startup, that there are of course spirits or some forces or some things outside the universe that control the universe. So those people always assume the idealist position. But the materialist believes that everything in this universe are natural processes and that they are in continuous process and take place. Like everything occurred through natural processes. Maybe how birth came to being, how creation came to be, and how everything evolved. You see, if you have two positions that we are seeing before, if you are either in the position of our uh, spiritualities or the spirit, uh, the, those who believe that the universe originated from the spirit or is composed of spirits, then you become idealist. You try to look for the meaning. Of what happened so maybe if maybe there's an earthquake you say oh you see that's god punishment eh? when there's any maybe there's uh, too much rain or anything lightning oh you see that's come from god. so you try to, con to connect whatever happens to some idea somewhere that there's something somewhere that controls this but the materials they take them as natural occurrences and processes so they tend to look at the situation how it is and I remember when we were discussing things of abstract thinking and contrast so the abstract goes to the deep and that's where the question came all along when we were moving along, that there should be principle of suf sufficient, uh, sufficient that everything that happened in this universe must have sufficient explanation. So that brings the two concepts of idealist and materialist. But now, as I was saying, the, first, the answer to the first question, what there is, in the previous chapter, it started with what the universe is made up of. And it said that those who believe that the universe is made up of 
the water. And there are those who believe the universe made up of spirits. And now this paragraph confirms that those who believe in spirits are idealists. And those who believe that matter are materialists. Not that they are materialistic, that they love material possession. But they are materialists that believe that everything is a natural process that goes along and that every process evolves and moves along. So that's what is coming out here. So uh, when we go to this, I want to also check the meaning of another two words here. That uh, one is the rationalism and the physicist. Even though they have been explained, but it's also good for me to check the, the explanation outside. Because one of them belongs to idealist thinking and another one belongs to materialist thinking. So let's go to empiricist. Empiricist, we check what, what it means. Hmm? Now, empiricist in philosophy is a person who supports the theory that all knowledge is based on experience derived from the senses. Most scientists are empiricists in nature or by nature. It's related to it relates to or characteristic of a theory that all knowledge is based on experience derived from senses. It's a radical empiricist view of science as a direct engagement with the world. So that's what empiricists mean. Empiricists mean that the idea that all learning comes from only experience and observation. I think that offers something. More. So the difference between empiricism and rationalism, the main difference between rationalism and empiricism is that rationalism is the knowledge that is derived from reason and logics. When on the other hand, empiricism is knowledge that is derived from experience and experimentation. So I think that might help a bit to expand the two paragraphs we have here. But all along, as I would say, indeed, it is a very heavy uh, paragraph that we, we ought to have enjoyed some direction from Kwame. But uh, let me give a bit my also further thinking on this in the second paragraph when he said that in as much, however, as in theorist, philosophy can be idealist, which means it can, of course, draw success to those beliefs, even though a materialist philosophy cannot be rationalist. And I think this now brings more of confusion. But anyway, that's what I'm trying to get. But I think we need to have more time to consume this further and see how we can best be able to, to understand it and maybe how to do another rewind on this. But uh, we really need to go deeply and understand what it is. And because of that, probably, we might wish to expand the, the reading a bit to another extra one paragraph to see if we can get some benefit of explanation. But as I've said, basically, this is going back to start up where we started from. Whether do we believe, whether are we taking the materialist position or idealist position? And in Chrome, of course, to stand was more of a materialist position, that he believed that everything was natural and natural processes takes place within the continent and everything else moves like that. Whether those who tend to believe in space and idealists who tend to believe that there are some other forces or other things outside there that control the universe. And this become different differences, a big differences ideologically between various people, whether they're Pan-Africans or people across those ideological stand, materialist or idealist positions. But let me get also what Brother Coco has to say, if he's able to speak. Brother Coco. I know you've said you are you are having some what have you said? Okay, you are from your way. He's to... on his way home, so he's only listening. Okay, we see somebody has joined us, Nobi Simapona. Can, can you be able to introduce us so we know who you are and whether you are trying to understand what's going on? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, yeah. So this is Nobi Mapoma from Zambia, uh, Lusaka. So yeah, I'm trying to understand. This is my first time joining you guys. So I'm trying to understand uh, everything. I'm very much interested. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go further a bit, of course, also to build on what Sister Maria was saying on this second paragraph, that rationalism is a philosophical breed imbued with a certain distinctive character in it, and explanation is conceived in such a way that the explanation must create a logical inference to that which is explained. 
on inference means that the and has no such inference to offer. If one kind, if one kind of event is regularly and invariably followed by another, uh, followed by another kind, inference accepts accept the first kind of an event as explaining the second kind. So of course it's the connecting that and, and this will maybe bring us back to the concept that if there's anything that happened in maybe in this continent or maybe in our traditional setup that people could say that if maybe you give birth to this kind of a child maybe it's because of something that happened within your your, your family or the other mistake that took place or the other offenses that were done or maybe if there are any cars that before so-called cars that before the family or the society or the community people tend to believe that it must be linked to something that not ever took place before but of course, there are people who don't, the rationalism don't take it into that. They don't find that connection. They, okay, they don't, it's not that they don't find the connection. They don't feel that the connection is automatic. Like if you have to say that whatever we're going through as an Africa or any challenge that we might, we might be going through as an Africa, you cannot say that it's because either we were cast or either if you have bad governance, you cannot say because there's a punishment from somewhere. So they tend to differentiate that. They tend not to actually put much power on some other forces being the reason for other things, but they tend actually to see them as natural occurrences, that they're things that must take place and do take place in life. I see Sister Mara is hands is up. Maybe you want to expand on this? No, I was just going to give an example, but I think you've already given a very good example uh, about empiricism. I was just going to say that um, I remember uh, a long time ago, I, I was um, at uni. A friend of mine was telling me how in a certain... Now, I, I don't have proof of this. I was only told this. But in a certain village in Western Africa, at a certain time of the year, um, people would get um, a sty, which is like a, a swelling on the eye. At, and it, it used to happen every time at the same around the same time and so obviously they had superstitions around it so uh well so i guess that, that would be an example of being ideal of being idealistic where they'll say well at this a certain time of the year then this happens because maybe i don't know the spirits are doing something well someone who's russian who's following rationalism will say well can we just look for some scientific evidence about that and try to really, really understand what logically what's going on. So that, that was a say to example that came to my mind. Then I also like what you, I was trying to also connect the paragraph to what's happening to us in, in Africa. And I think you put it very, very well, Comrade Big Ben. Thank you for that, Sister Agnes. I think you're now trying to come back again. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. And <clears throat> sorry. Uh, I think uh, after this, I I also I actually had the question which I told you. Let me first get some explanation before I raise my question. But partially, half of it is already answered uh, because I was I was wondering what Nkrumah himself was, whether he was uh, materialistic or idealistic. And uh, before I ask, actually, when you are you are explaining you answered and I am grateful for that. It's actually getting more interested and <laughs> I was just smiling alone, maybe even laughing alone. Because uh, I was trying to ask myself, what about the law of cause and effect? Uh, this natural law of cause and effect, where does it fall? Because according to me, it's not like uh, materialistic in nature, like, um, for me, it, it, it falls like ideal, idealistic kind of. And then um, uh, this issue of, to, this issue to do with dreams and so on. Like, let me say, there are people who really will have accurate dreams before it is reflect, before it happens. Or uh, maybe something has already happened when that person was not born in, in, in her family or his family. Then in a dream, it will be narrated to her all everything in details and the names of the people. And if she's asked to, to draw or if there are photos of these people, she will be able to identify and all this. And actually, I have a, 
a cousin, sister like that. So where do we put this? Because these are realistic things. I mean, things which are ideal in nature to do with the uh, mentality, mentalism, spirituality, whatever it is. But the fact is, it's really happening, and uh, and I have witnessed it. So I was just asking myself, can a materialistic world with uh, no, uh, let, let me say, external powers or whatever it is, I don't know what to call it, like intuition kind of mentalism and all this, be able to, to reflect this. Or let me say, like this cousin of mine, there was an example even, uh, she actually dreamt about me and and promotion and de describe everything to me the way it was. And I just celebrated and say, uh, may it happen, I, I receive, I know. And actually what she she dreamt like in, in three weeks and uh, five weeks time came to pass. And, and, and that is exactly where I am. So I'm just asking myself like, where do we put this? Is it also in this materialistic way? But uh, I think it's to me, it's more like the universe is spiritual in nature. I don't know what kind of it, but what I can testify is that some things which are beyond material happened and even me, I am involved. That is why I was just asking myself. I was just smiling and laughing. And I was even asking myself, the uni what is the universe actually? Hmm? Or could it be a combination of both? Could it be also materialistic and idealistic? Or uh, what is it? I, I was also, I was just questioning all this. But just to say, I testify with what has happened to me and what has happened to others. She can get those things the way it is. And she's even not interested in that because she's, but of course she's always willing to share and she shares. And then uh, when she shares, we, we listen because it's likely to, to it, it is going to manifest itself, whether sooner or later. But like the one of mine, it manifested itself in five weeks time, actually. So just to, to say those were some of the things running in my mind when, but it is really getting more interesting. And uh, I think I like this all. Um, brother, brother Pigeon, may we ask Sister Agnes, what she decided, um, Kwame Krumah, was whether an idealistic or materialistic, uh, because she told us she she had uh, th th thought it was one or the other. So maybe she could explain a bit more. Sorry, please. Thank you. Yeah, I thank you very much. I was just questioning myself because when the two were explained, and I was asking myself. Uh, I, because I, I don't know much about Nkrumah yet, and uh, actually I'm new still in this group and we are all in the learning process. So I was asking myself, was he materialistic? Was he idealistic? I really didn't know. Then, um, then I was going to ask this question actually, but eventually the question was answered. Then I ask myself now, what am I? I mean, do I believe that the universe is... Um, made up of water only or it's made up of spirits and so i couldn't find myself because of the extent so i am like what if could it be also made up of both eh? and who is to help me answer this what is the universe made up of so those were some of the things we came and then when i was thinking about this these experiences came to my mind of what my first cousin actually she's my first cousin and she's still alive and she's here in, in south sudan uh, as I told in Hadim, it will be reflected exactly what it is. Of course, we say in psychology, sometimes it's in dream, like you think what you have been thinking about, what will come to you and all this. So could it be possible, like about my proportion, my, I mean, my, my promotion, could it be possible that she was thinking for me to be promoted and then it came exactly the position and what, what, and, and the way it has happened to me? I don't know. So I was just questioning myself. I'm like, could it also be like the universe was both? But, but so, Sister Agnes, but Sister Agnes, you said that you heard what I think Brother uh, Pigeon had said, but I missed it. That's why I wanted to know which side you thought he fell on, idealistic or materialistic. I I am saying 
I was asking myself and I am finding myself in both. Like other times I think the universe is materialistic and other times I think the universe is idealistic. So personally, I did not find in my own place because all this time I've been thinking like the, the universe is materialistic kind of, but what my sister shared with me about the dream, what my cousin shared with me about the dream, and it came to manifest in five weeks time, the way it, she put it. So that one also questioned my belief again. So that's why I'm asking, could it both, who can help me to answer it? whether it is what or what. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just to say, as I told you, I was laughing just because I'm like, I, I really, I don't know what, uh, I think I, I was just laughing because there was a time whereby, you know, I look at events all and I'm like, you know, uh, this one happens and this and that. I justifying it in a way like materialistic, um, and all these natural processes, actually, maybe the, the right word to put it. But uh, when the other uh, dream of my, my cousin sister happened, and I start to question that, like, what is it now? Or maybe she has been thinking about me, and, and how is it that it is, it, it, it is brought to her exactly the position and everything? So that one also questioned myself. I mean, it, it, it made me to question my belief and so on. So uh, I'm just I'm just sharing what uh, my experience with you. Thank you, yeah. brother Kwame. Yeah, brother Kwame, we've actually missed you a lot, but we are happy that you can join us, because the paragraph we've been reading has been heavy enough for us to comprehend the, the 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 paragraph starting from the word answer to the question what there is. So we've been trying to actually grasp or uh, get to understand the difference between the materialist position and the idealist position. I've been trying to use whatever we can be able to explain, and also rationalism has now come in and empiricism. So, Brother Kwame, kindly, if you are if you are able to help us understand those two concepts and help us understand also this paragraph based on your thinking. Brother Kwame, we can't hear you. Maybe you connect your microphone. You can unmute. Oh. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay, I was saying that let's start off by getting the terminology right. I'm hearing materialistic and idealistic. Um, that is not the correct terminology. The terminology I think you wanted to use materialist and idealist. So um, someone who takes a position that universe is made up of matter is a materialist. He or she is not materialistic. Uh, materialistic has a different meaning. Materialist. And it is philosophical. So let's, let's remember we are talking about philosophical materialism and philosophical idealism. In terms of um, the person who subscribes to that position. He or she is either idealist or materialist. So the, 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 the two substances, water and, and on one hand and spirit on the other hand, those are uh, examples of uh, the position of two different philosophers. Um, so, so when we are saying that, when Thales says the universe is made of water, um, that is not to say that that is a position of all materialist philosophers. And when Berkeley says that the universe is made up of spirit, uh, or spirits and their ideas, that is also not to say that that is the position of all idealists. Um, so, so we've got to uh, the page where um, the answer to the question, what there is, meaning that how do 
how do we understand the universe in which we live? Uh, we have seen from the beginning that the answers can either be uh, idealists or materialists. Uh, in the sense that the idealists will say that the universe is essentially made up of, of spirits, spirit, or spirit and their ideas. And the materialists will say, well, it's made up of matter. Um, the question from what Sister Agnes was asking, the question is not uh, whether the universe is made up of both. Uh, the universe is made up of a lot of things. The universe is made up of uh, souls, uh, spirits, uh, thoughts, emotions, uh, rocks, <laughs> water, rivers. There are so many things in the universe. So the question, and then there is air, and so on. So the question is not whether the universe is made up of these things. The question is which one is primary. That's a central question. In, that, in other words, which one comes first? Uh, the one that you think comes first, or you believe comes first, makes you makes you um, uh, if a subscriber to that philosophy. So if you believe that spirits come first, you know, and you can explain how matter will come out of spirit, you know, and not resort to uh, to magic and so on. If you can explain. And convince people, yeah, then you are an idealist. Uh, if you are ever you say that matter is primary, and by matter we mean uh, entities like hydrogen, oxygen, uh, dark matter, uh, gravity, that kind of thing. If 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 you are saying that those come first, then again, you should be able to explain how, for example, ideas come from matter and so on. But the question is, what, which one is primary? Uh, because we are, I think we, we, we all here should accept that the universe in which we live has all these things. The people, people dream dreams. You know, people do get mad. People do get uh, happy. People, you know, these things are part of our universe. Um, they, then, then the question... Um, uh, the question then is, uh, how do we, how have philosophers attempted to understand the world? And this is where the empiricist philosophy comes in. Uh, because the empiricist philosophy says that to understand the world, you must do A, B, C, D, yeah? If you want to understand the world. And so, and so um, essentially, the empirical philosophy would say that if you want to understand the world, then you must observe the world and take notes, do your research, take notes, take data, analyze the data, and then come to a scientific or philosophical con conclusion. Um, so that is what the, uh, uh, the empiricist would say. Um, now, Uh, an empiricist philosophy cannot be idealist uh, because empiricism um, starts from matter. It talks it its its starting point is matter, and the starting point of idealism is spirit. Therefore, an empiricist philosophy cannot be idealist in that sense. Um, and then, and then we get into rationalism. Uh, 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 yeah, rationalism and empiricism. The best way to understand the two as an avenue to explanation. In other words, if you want to explain the world, if you want to explain what there is, do you explain it using rationalism or do you explain it using empiricism? And And so... <clears throat> The best way, therefore, to understand it is, is to take an example of a rationalist explanation of the universe. And what is that? Well, the top, the top science or scientific endeavor, if you like, that takes a rationalist approach to the universe is mathematics. Because mathematics does not depend 
on empirical on on empiricism to verify whether something is true or not. Yeah, and I think in Kruma, if you have, have you read everything by the way, because you've you've been here before. Have you read everything uh, up yes, to the can. end? What you uh -huh. so I think later on Kruma uses the example of addition. Yeah, addition as an example. So if the rule says that if if the rational procedure says to arrive at at um, to, to arrive at the sum of two numbers, add the first one to the second one, and so on and so forth. If you follow that rule rationally, the result you get is is itself the proof. Yeah. Ah, now you don't have to do you don't have to do any experiment. It's not the experiment that will tell you that it is true. You can use letters like A plus B. You understand? And then you get A plus B or 2A plus 2B. And that result will give you an answer. And that in itself is proof. So mathematics is an example of a rationalist approach to understanding the world. And if you like, um, a physics is, is an empiricist, the best empiricist example to understanding the world. Because empiric, because it's a subject that that basically looks at the material universe and says that, for example, there is something called called a gravity, and it's a force such that uh, it's, for example, nine nine point eight so so and so. And if you you jump into the air, it will pull you to the ground. Now, that is physics. And so it is, a, it is, if you like, the best example of an attempt to understand the world. So, so to summarize, uh, I'm, keeping, I'm keeping an eye also on the time. To summarize, mathematics is the best example for, of a rationalist attempt to understand the world, and physics is, is, the, uh, is the best example of an empiricist philosophy. Yeah. yeah but uh -huh. yeah, go on. Now, do any of rationalism or empiricism belong to either idealist or materialist, or are they explain it? they are playing both? So yeah, so empiricism, so empiricism is mat materialist because it starts it starts from the from from the materialist position. Now uh Rationalism, if you if you look at it, if you look at it as mathematics, also also starts from the universe. Uh, but but it is we humans that have have if you like carved it. You understand? They, uh, mathematics does not drop from the sky. It is human beings using their mind that have come up with the symbols necessary. Uh -huh. so so um so so the so there are so there are there are two things there are three things there there are three things here the first one is explanation how do we explain the world that's the first thing how do we explain it do we explain it using rationalism or, or empiricism that's the first thing the second question is how how can we have knowledge? How, how can we know what, what something is? You know, what is? What is the thing? What is it? What is the universe? As we say, is the universe spirit or matter? Now, that philosophically is said to be an ontological question. It's to do with the nature of being. What is it? What there is? What is it that there is? And then the third, the third thing is so so knowledge. How do we arrive at knowledge? It is the third one. That is an epistemological question. How do we know that the universe is made up of matter? How do we know that the universe is made up of a spirit? How do we know? So that's a different question. It's a different question to what is matter? What is spirit? Uh, and that is also different from 
Well, if we know what it is, how do we explain the world in which we live? Ah. So let me pause there for now. Okay, thank you. Before you pause, maybe I'll, I'll bring another one question for you that might help us understand better and then we can move on with this because we were actually trying to grasp and understand. I'll go back to members also now to share if there's anything they have been able also to build on so that we clearly understand it. Now, my question would be, now, as, as it says that, but uh, that rationalism, because this succession because this succession of events is not a necessary one, there's no logical inference from one occurrence to another. So do the rationalists tend to believe that uh, occurrences or consequences of events are not interrelated? So they are, they are interrelated, but it's, it's, it's logic. Yeah, it's logic. If you say that, if you say that uh, for example, if you say one plus one, if you ask the question, what is one plus one? The logical answer is that it's two. Yeah? That's the logical answer. Yeah? It's two. One plus one is two. So, so, so if I see two things somewhere, I can infer, I can make an inference that for those two things to be there, one and one came together. Yeah? If I see a child, if I see a baby, I can infer that there was a mother and there was a father. I don't have to be there to see it, but I can make that inference. Yeah? So it's, so it's a logical inference. Now, empiricism would say, no, we, we are not, uh, we are not, uh, we want to do the experiment ourselves uh, to see if a baby will come when a parent, father and a mother are together. Yeah? We want to see that experiment. Want. So empiri 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 the empiricism is an experimental approach to life. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't accept it, it. You can make in in inferences, but you must start with an experiment, and then based on that experiment, you then can draw conclusions and make your inferences, but not rationalism. Rationalism can say that. There is something called one billion. Oh, you can go further and say there is something called one billion, 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 billion. Yeah? But nobody, no human being on this planet will ever be able to count one billion, 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 billion years because it is not experimentally possible. As I may say, it is not experimentally possible for you to be able to count one billion, one billion years. Because you yourself, your life is about what? 70, 80, 90 years? So how can you count a one billion years? However, you don't have to count it to know it exists. How do you know one billion exists? One billion years exists? Because you can add, you can add one, 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 and then add a billion years, and you get one billion years. So the existence of one billion years does not depend on carry on experiment. You just know because you have done a rational calculation. Yeah? Aha. Uh -huh. But if you require an experiment in order to know whether there is one billion years, then um, then then um, you cannot arrive at the truth because you, you, you need an experiment. Now, if you go out into the world and you you observe the world and you start with you start you start observation and you say well i think that all ravens are black so ravens are birds that are, are black yeah i think all ravens are black and then you go into the world this is an experiment then you start observing ravens and every raven you observe is black then that means you have discovered and ex experimental truth through deduction. So it's a deductive truth. Now, supposing you went the other way, you did not start from the position that all ravens are black. You start from the position that, and you start from the position that you, you go into the world, you see a raven, it is black. You put that one aside. You go and search again, you find another raven, it's also black. You, you add it to the first one the third one, the fourth one. And then you put together, you find about 
a million a million ravens they are all black yeah then you can come to the conclusion that all ravens are black but the question is are they what makes you think that the next one you see is not white or green or blue you can't now the second one is called inductive truth it's called induction it's inductive truth and there's no way you can know that just because you have found a million ravens that are black does not mean that the next one that you see will also be black it could be white so so exp so experiment based on induction is not a guarantee that uh what you have what you have uh, concluded is is truth for all times yeah uh, unlike unlike rationalism where you can categorically state that there's such a thing as one billion rationally you can't say that about empiricism as 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 deductive science or empiricism as inductive science the third the third approach to empiricism is is, is, is that look why is it that what is important is that ravens uh, you you you've you've you started off with oh ravens are all black and then you've gone out and found ravens or that you have uh, done an experiment from one to the other you found ravens that are black there is a third position that says that that is not the important thing the important thing is not your deductive truth and the important thing is not your inductive truth the important thing is why are ravens black that is the most important scientific question that you should be asking not whether you found black ravens but why are ravens black and that is called abduction again let me pause there thank you for pausing because we you might have lost us seriously but let me let me check with members present whether you lost us all along or we are together sister agnes based on the question you are asking and now the information that is coming up are you better off and what is your thing now yeah yeah i think uh, that that uh, that is helpful i have been following thank you very much so you understand that both exist spirits and matter material or matter and spirits just that what come first so it's not disputing whether your cousin is actual on the spirit or, or spiritual as you're trying to put it but the both <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. I, I, I now got it because, um, yeah. So it's actually the the primary one. Uh, what comes first, as as it was explained, and that is very interesting indeed. Yeah. Uh, between the chicken and the egg, what came first? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so from what uh, Brother Kwame has explained, what I've understood is that so in, for empiricism, um, the thing has to be seen or uh, experimented and, the, and then we get results and then we see it and then we can say that's empiricism. And for rationalism, it's more logical thought. If it makes sense, if we can count up to a billion, then it must be possible because we have the number. So if it's logically possible, then we can rationalize it and say that's rationalism. That's what I've understood. I don't know if that's correct for thinking about it. Okay, let me go to, of course, Sister Ida. Sister Ida? Um, Sister Ida is just saying nothing because I'm listening, but it's still above my head. But I understand it as he says it, but yeah, the best I can say. <laughs> Today, of course, it was a heavy concept to be digested. Brother Glenroy, a little better off what... What can you match to this explanation? Yes, then... thank you. Uh, yes, thank you very much for that. Um, again, as uh, 
I said earlier on, I'm listening, trying to catch up. Uh, but the terminology and the explanation of the terminology uh, is, is made things a little bit clearer. Thank you for that. Okay, you're welcome. Brother Coco, you said you are you are, you, are, you are you're on your way, you may not be able to speak. Brother Nobi Mapoma, can you be able to contribute to anything so far based on what you've heard? Yeah, um I think I like the um uh, the, the 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 definitions and how he's explained the differences with the difference between rationalism and em empiricism. Um, especially uh, rationalism, where he says uh, it's more like we can uh, predict we, we, even before we we do our calculations, we know the outcome that we expect. Yeah, and like empiricism, um, where we really don't know what the outcome is, and that's why we are doing it. Yeah. Um, though I'm a little bit, I haven't uh, really uh, gotten the concept under uh, ideal idealist and materialist, but uh, the, the, the later part of rationalism and empiricism are put in that part. Thank you for that. I think uh, we will actually have to dwell into this concept clearly and try to see how it relates to the context in Africa, for example. Uh, but Akomi also said that, of course, materialists are those who assume the rational position and, the, uh, of course, uh, idealists assume the imperialist position. Uh, based on what, brother, let me get your name right. Based on what you are asking on the concept of uh, uh, idealism and materialist, materialist position, I'd like to go back to Brother Kwame. Uh, I think there's, a, there's I try to connect this to what we read before on the concept of the inside and the outside. And that, uh, of course, on the concept of sufficient reasoning and explanation, I think is where the imperialism and rationalism are coming in to give explanation to occurrences and what happened or what there is. But also oh, enlarging on the word idealist in, in relation to the outside and the inside. Uh, how can maybe you be able to help us understand better the difference between idealist and materialist on their approach on either the inside or outside? And I know Nkrumah went ahead to discuss about Christianity a bit and he tried to tie it to, of course, uh, uh, the, 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 the Buckley position on spirits. And now it's becoming better because, you know, before we started with spirit and water. Now, actually, spirit and water is getting another name in terms of ideolog ideological understanding of idealism and materialism. So how can we be able to understand better the idealism and materialism in relation to the outside and inside cases, Brother Kwame, if you can be able to help us? Because I really think that this is where now we need to connect all we've been reading to this concept. Brother Kwame? Yeah, muted. You see, these, these uh, ideas are very heavy. They are very heavy. Rationalism, empiricism, epistemology, uh, ontology, or those are not mentioned here. These are very big ideas. They are the, at the heart of philosophy. And that's why, if you recall, in the past, we've said that let's take it paragraph by paragraph. I'm really sorry I wasn't here from the beginning because I'm trying to um, put all the, the the paragraphs you shared by the pigeon for this, today's reading. I'm trying to put them all together. And so it's quite heavy. Whereas what I would have done um, because of these strange issues, I would have um, gone paragraph by paragraph to explain. Um, so, so in the absence of explaining paragraph by paragraph, um, what I'm doing is it could be too heavy and it may not come across. Uh, one will get an intuitive understanding, but um, if we had gone paragraph by paragraph, I was like, sorry, I wasn't here from the beginning. It would have been much uh, clearer. Um, Brother Kwame, so, we only did two paragraphs, yeah. really. Which, which one? Which one and which one? Um, we did from Is that to the question, and then we went to we did the rationalism is a philosophical philosophical breed down to that bit, down to the end of that Hume. Oh, I see. Okay, I thought you went further than that. Okay, no. uh, I'm also looking at the time. 
So in terms of the first, in terms of the first paragraph that you read, basically, as we all know, we all hear, there is an opposition between idealism and materialism. Yeah? The opposition is that uh, materialists are saying that idealists have got it wrong and that um, the universe is a materialist universe. Yeah? That matter underpins the universe. The idealists, on the other hand, are saying that the materialists have got it wrong and that the basis of the universe is spirit, spirits and their ideas. Right? Now, the problem for the idealists is that when they put it that way, when they put it as spirit, um, the universe was here before any spirit arrived. And by spirit here, I mean we human beings and our, our spirits, yeah? Human beings are spirits. There was this universe before we arrived. We didn't arrive before the universe because that's not possible. It's not possible for human beings to arrive before the universe arrived. That is, as you can, that is logically impossible because you have to, you know, you came out of the earth. So the earth must have been here before you came. And the earth must have been here millions and millions of years before you even arrived. Therefore, what you think and your spirit and so on, um, all are coming after the universe ha 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 is. Aha. So, so you cannot then tell us that uh, the universe is, is a mental thing. The universe is a spiritual thing in the sense that you know, it's, it's, in our, it's in our head or it's in our spirit. If you make the argument that well, I don't mean human spirits. I mean a spirit called God. Yeah, if you if you make that argument, then then the question arises, as we saw we saw before, um, how did how did uh, uh, how did God that God him or herself, you know, where did him or herself come from? What is the origin of that God him or himself or herself? And is that God inside the universe or outside the universe? Ha. Huh. And if that God is inside the universe, then uh, which came first? If it's inside the universe. So if it's inside the universe, one of them must have come first. Yeah. Now if you say it's outside the universe, then you have a problem because if it's the universe, then there can be no universe outside the universe. Because the universe is one. So the universe has no outside. Yeah. Uh, however, as we saw earlier when we went through this, um, you can use concepts to understand the world. And that's what we human beings are good at. And one of the concepts you can use is the inside outside thesis. And, and it's just a, a conception. You know, it doesn't mean that it's real. Yeah, it's just a conception. Um, if I say that I want to add two things and I want A to stand for one thing and I want B to stand for the other thing and I can add them and I say A plus B, it doesn't mean that the thing is A, is actually A or the other thing is B. It's just a concept, an algebraic concept to help you understand the universe. So, so again, I'm looking at the time. and But anyway... So the first paragraph basically is saying that the opposition between idealism and materialism is not the same between rationalism and empiricism. Uh -huh. Why? Because empiricism is based on experiment and rationalism is based on logic. You see, that's why that's why that opposition cannot hold. And if, if you take an empiricist position, if you do an experiment, you can still apply logic in your experiment. If you if if you do an experiment, you understand you cook you cook a pot of rice as an experiment, and you weigh the rice and you say 10, 10 grams of rice, and you cook it, and and it's cooked. And let's say it took you let's say fifteen minutes to cook it. You can make a logical inference that in that case, if I have ten times that rice, I may need ten times more time. That is logical. That is that is perfectly acceptable. So 
you can do uh, 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 an empirical experiment and still have a logical a logical argument. Uh, but rationalism is saying that you don't need any experiment to be, be begin to make a rational explanation. You don't need any experiment. Just by by reasoning, by looking at the universe and reasoning, you can come to conclusions without any experiment. Uh -huh. And 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 this is a this is a difference between uh, physics and mathematics. Physics requires an experiment to prove that something is true. Mathematics requires no experiment. It doesn't require any experiment to prove something is true. It doesn't require experiment. Thank you uh, for the comment. So, uh, so, so, brother Pigeon. So that was the that's the first paragraph. The heart of the second paragraph. Is that David Hume, who is a race, who is a racist? Hmm? David Hume is a racist. Yes. Uh, we will we will go together with you the second paragraph next class. It's good that you've given us the first paragraph. Uh, you have one minute to go. I would like just to ask one question: Will you have to apply rationalism or empiric in order to get the solution for Africans' problem? Aha! Uh -huh. Now this is this is the other question. That let's remember that all we are reading. It's about Africa. We are trying to apply to Africa. Uh, and the, the question is, given our problems, what should be our solution? Should we look for rationalist explanations of our problem? Or do we need experiments? Uh -huh. how, how should we approach our problems? Or, or do we need both? Uh, do we need rationalism in order to, to understand where we are? You know, or... Can, can a rational explanation explain to us where we are? Or do we need an empiricist approach to understand where we are? Uh -huh, you see? So, so the question is very relevant to us. Uh, so for example, a rationalist explanation would say that, doesn't it make sense that if we have 55 governments, for 1.3 billion people. And there's another country with 1.4 billion, and they, also, they just have one government, not 55. Doesn't it make rational, rational, is it not, does it not, doesn't it, <laughs> is it not rational? Yeah, rational, logical. Do you not think that logically, it makes sense to say that instead of 55 governments, let's have one. So that is a, that is a rationalist explanation or the rationalist argument trying to rationalize it and to make the logical inference. The empirical argument will say that, okay, well, we don't really know uh, what will happen if we unite the whole of Africa, do we? Okay, so why don't we start with an experiment? Why don't we start with five, five countries uniting first? Let's see how that goes. And then maybe we can add another five as an experiment. And then maybe another five and so on. Yeah? Or... And one could say, well, why do we have to start with five? Why don't we start with all of it? You know, and then see how it goes. And then we, we correct things as we go along. So in other words, the unification of Africa is an empiricist project. It's an, uh, yeah, it's an empiricist project. We want to start as an experiment and see how it goes. Whereas the, the rationalist argument will say that, look, all the, yeah, all the arguments show that if we... If we bring come together, we'll have one army, we'll have one government, we'll have one this, and so on and so forth. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Because of time, I want to stop there. Thank and we can much. continue next week. Thank you very much for that. Of course, this for next week. Now we'll start it again and rewind it and we'll ask every member here actually to provide their thinking in regards to that. Will we now apply rationalism or empiricism in order to liberate Africa? And we'll either take the position of materialism or idealism in order to find the proper solution for the problems you're going through as Africa. So thank you very much for everyone who joined us today. I know we joined a bit late, but it was a fruitful class. And see you next Thursday, same time. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you.